In this tutorial, we're going to set up from scratch a Java project, so it will be using an overlap to the runtime. We're going to, uh, so I have this test project here that our initial goal is to render in our uh, Java project, uh, our libgdx project, and then later I'm going to show some uh, several modifications and uh, several different ways to load the assets or render your scene uh, depending on your situation. So let's get to it. Uh, here's how we start. First of all, the easiest way to do it uh, is to get the official libgdx setup application. So let me download that. And as you can see from the latest changes here, uh, from the latest changes here, we have a new button here that shows a show third party extension. And here, as a third party extension, we have an overlap to the runtime, which is awesome. Uh, so, what you do is you check that, you click save, uh, and let's just set up uh, a demo project. Uh, demo project. Have a specific destination here. Let me create a folder. Here. And as for my Android SDK, you need to set up uh, an Android SDK so you can build an Android project. Um, I suspect. Here's the location we're going to use the latest libgdx version. I don't want HTML5 here. The iOS, Android, and desktop are fine. And it's very important to check the free type fonts here. Because Overlap 2D uses free type fonts, and if you don't have this here, things might not really work as expected. So with free type fonts set, uh, and latest libgdx and Android SDK, and Overlap 2D selected here, we're ready to build. So just click Generate. And yep, yep, and I think we're ready. Let's check this out. Yep, our demo project is here and ready. Now we can close this, go to our, to our IDE. I'm using IntelliJ IDEA, which is really good, but you guys can do the same with Eclipse. Uh, with a generated project is a Gradle project, so you need to import it using Gradle. We're going to select the demo project here, choose Gradle, and click Finish. This usually takes some time. Uh, Gradle will download all the things that are necessary. Uh, but the great thing is, it's going to be already bundled with Overlap to the runtime. So you don't have to do any other settings or anything. This is going to be a ready-to-go project. Meanwhile, while it's happening here, I'm just going to show you the demo content I prepared. So we're going to render this. It contains just images and a sprite animation for now. This is a simple sprite animation with several rhyme scenes. I will go on a change some stuff later and make it a little bit complicated but for now let's just stick to the with the simple one let's see how this thing is doing okay yes we we'll open it in this window and this latest stuff is getting downloaded Now the project we're generating, it's going to have an empty asset list. Of course, we would need to export our assets from here to that project's folder. We're going to do that in a moment. So, okay, here, here's our demo project. It's already set up for Android and desktop and iOS. Uh, and uh, if we just click on Gradle here, you can, if you don't have this here, you can just go to, um, View tool windows and choose Gradle here, but I already have that loaded, so 
no need to do it for me. Yeah, so first thing first is just let's just do a quick cradle refresh to make sure everything is in place. And then we're going to run this, uh, scroll down, you can see that we have a, your desktop tasks and we're going to run the run task. Okay, this seems to be ready. Let's just run it. And we're seeing just a default libgdx setup here. So it doesn't load any other stuff. So let's first of all get rid of that. So we're going to uh, open Android assets and delete the bad logic JPEG. And we're going to go to core and open sources, demo project, and just get rid of these things. Okay. And we do want a black background. So if we run it again. Yeah, we have a black one. Now, several things you need to do here. First of all, we want this assets folder to be full with our assets from this demo. So in order to do that, first of all, let's copy the assets folder path here and come to file export settings and copy and paste this here. So now we're going to export to that location. Uh, we don't want our pack file to be really big. We, we do want it to be small. So let's just go 2048 here. Save settings and export. Now if I go back here, our assets folder is now fully populated with all the stuff we need. Uh, now for rendering. Uh, first of all, let's, uh, as you can see, the size of our chosen demo is 800 to 480. So I'm going to go to desktop application and I'm going to make sure that our window is the same size just for our convenience. So with 800 uh, and 8, 480. Okay, uh, so if we run it now, you can see it kind of has the correct size here. Uh, so uh, first of all, we're going to go very simple. We're going to, uh, we're not going to use stage and we're going to very simply just, uh, you know, uh, I, mean, I mean, we're going to use stage, we're not going to use overlap to this stage. So we're going to be really simple here to render our scene. Uh, so we're going to go to core and create a new stage, it's called game stage. By the way, I have to mention that it's not going to be always like that. The next versions of overlap to the runtime will be changed not to actually use stage, but right now it's stage, so it has to extend the, extend the stage. And I'm going to create a constructor. And create an instance of it in our demo project. So private game stage page. Something like that. Okay. And obviously what we need to do is to call the act method and draw it. Okay. Well this is an empty stage, it does nothing. And if we want to render our scene there, what we need to do is create a simple instance of scene loader. So we just go here and create scene loader SL. And we're just going to use the simple default constructor that will load all the required assets for us right here on that line. Uh, so this is for, this is kind of a lazy load. So for, I mean, for lazy guys. So if you don't wanna go complicated, if you're just doing this to learn things, and, or this is the first time you're using overlap to D, this is the, probably the way you want to do it. So you don't uh, concern yourself with any asset management or how you load resources. You just write this simple line here and that's it. Uh, the next thing that we should do is actually decide what scene we wanna load. So 
we're gonna load scene and our the default scene here is uh, that we created by default it's called main scene you can see it's written here main scene so we're going to use that name here as a string and just have it loaded uh, I want to show you that it's actually here you can see it in the assets it's main scene data file but you don't need to write an extension here just the name okay so we're going to load the scene on that line and now that it's loaded all we have to do is just retrieve the entire scene as an actor and add it to our stage so we're going to say add actor and then get the root get root actor here that's all that should be enough hopefully to load our scene and it is you can see that everything is working the animation and uh, you may probably notice that background is a little bit different because we're rendering on the black background and here in editor we have gray you can easily change that by I don't know giving some kind of grayish background here that should do well that was too much something like that awesome okay that looks good uh, next thing I want us to do here is to actually see exactly how the resources are getting loaded uh, now if you go inside the scene loader you can see that default scene loader uh, constructor that gets nothing it's actually creating its own instance of resource management resource manager and it initiates all the resources and so you kind of don't have to do it but we can just take it one step further and do it ourselves so in future we can uh, you know for example it would be great if we can load our resources before we actually get to stage here in order to do that we should create our own resource manager and uh, I'm not, we're not going to create our uh, own class right now we're just going to create our own instance of resource manager so create a resource manager and let me just take this out here okay and I'm going to load all the resources um, sorry, I'm going to init all resources here. But what this method does, it basically takes a look at all the scenes you got and loads every and single one of used assets into the memory. So if on this scene you have those guys used they're going to go into memory and you're gonna get some other guys loaded too because they're in the same pack file but you're not gonna load for example some particle effects or stuff like that uh, obviously in order if you want to make your own function that loads only the stuff that you need and doesn't load the other stuff you might want to extend the resource manager and create your own and call some other function but right now this is the kind of the default way to do it now that we have everything loaded here, we're going to pass resource manager to our game stage. And let's expect it here. And kind of store the reference. And pass it to our scene loader. This way our scene loader is not going to create its own, but it's going to just reuse the scene loader we have provided with already preloaded assets. Now, if we run an application like this, nothing is going to change. But we took the resource loading and put it outside of our stage, just where our application is just loading. That is something you really want to do if you're creating a normal game for production. Uh, now, next things I want to do is use a lighting system. If you want to use lights or uh, physics you're kind of you you just can't go with a simple stage you need to use overlap to this stage at this moment so in order to do that let's just get a bit of a darker scene here let's get dark here and add kind of a light source 
here. Um, maybe weird colors, something like that. And yeah, let's not forget to add rain. Maybe bluish. Something. Okay, that that guy do it. Yeah, something like this. I'm going to save this by pressing Control S. And I'm going to re-export the entire asset data by pressing Control E. Now, when I did that by pressing Control E, or you can just go to File and Export here, that'll regenerate the assets in this folder. If I just run our application right now, nothing will change because we're not using overlap to this stage. That's, let's change that. So let's go to our game stage and instead of stage, extend our overlap to this stage. Okay, let's delete that. And overlaps to this stage is, will already do some stuff for you. So we have to Call the uh, super here and let's just dive in and see what it does. Overlap to this stage will initialize the stage for us. It will create some stuff and configure the light settings and do stuff like that. Uh, what we need to do here is instead of creating our own scene loader, we can now call in its scene loader method. And it does take resource manager as a parameter. So now that this is done, we already have scene loader loaded with those resources. Uh, if we want to load scene, uh, so what we can do here is scene loader. So yeah, just use that name instead of that cell. Okay. Let's run that again, and it does work. We do have entire lighting system here and our scene rendered. Hear how simple that is. Now the, that's, that should be almost it. Now the latest thing I wanna leave you with is if you're creating a production game, you probably don't wanna go with a resource, default resource manager. Default resource manager is kind of to give you an easy way out, uh, but it has some downsides, like it doesn't load things uh, synchronously, so your application will kind of freeze until it loads everything. And if you have a big project, that will be a long freeze, and you will probably want to give your uh, player some kind of a progress bar and things like that. So that's a downside. The other downside is because you just get this method that does load everything. And that's probably not what you always want to do. Maybe you want to be smart about it. Maybe you want to load some stuff now and then load other parts of assets just when you need them. Uh, so in order to achieve that, you can either write your own resource manager that will implement an iResource loader and iResource retriever. Or you can go a bit easier here and just extend the resource manager and add your functionality over it. So you basically usually do something like that. You should say something like custom resource manager here extends resource manager and create the constructor. Maybe overwrite some methods or just do some other custom stuff. And don't forget to call the super. Uh, so with that done, you can just change everywhere resource manager to your custom resource manager. And things should work. That's all. Uh, you can change whatever and make sure you, maybe you want to, uh, my recommendation is that if you wanna load stuff asynchronously, you would probably want to use this for that. So dx comes with asset manager. So probably wanna take a look at this. Oh, sorry. 
and you want to maybe incorporate this into your resource manager and make sure you kind of simulate threading here and load your resources slowly. Well, that's up to you. And I guess that's it for now. I hope that helped most of you to set up your application, uh, to set up your game with an overlap to the runtime. Uh, and ask any questions down there in the comments or on overlap to the forums. I'll be happy to help and hope you guys learned something from this. Have fun!